Lo Wai an hour ago, would never have thought that he would appear in some kind of magical summoning circle and surrounded by many beautiful girls. Lo Wai was sitting on his chair with a paper in his hands and was embarrassed by the fact that many girls with red faces were sitting in front of him. But suddenly a girl with a trident in her hands came up to him and with a serious voice began to tell Lo Wai, calling him a man from another world. That the human race has been dying out for a thousand years, and they are the only survivors, finally they waited for his arrival. Hearing her words, Lo Wai stretched out his hand forward and told her in response that she would wait and give him time to think. Having said that, Lo Wai adjusted his glasses and began to think that firstly, humanity in another world had fallen, secondly, only a group of suspicious girls remained, and thirdly they were waiting for him. Would it be? After thinking about it, Lo Wai began to imagine spending the night with these beautiful girls. Clutching the paper in his hands, Lo Wai, with a red and flaming face, told himself to calm down. But suddenly, he was slapped sharply in the face, asking what was on his mind. The girl in the raincoat started shouting at Lo Wai that everyone was a little tired after a damn difficult summoning spell. After these words, the girl took off her cloak, and Lo Wai was surprised to see her, because she was half a cat, and she was also very similar to his cat when he lived in his world. The image of his cat immediately appeared in his eyes. The cat girl came up to Lo Wai and asked him, calling him Master Lo, what if he didn't recognize her? Lo Wai was very excited when he saw the big breasts of the cat girl in front of him, so Lo Wai's nose bled like a stream and he thought to himself that at that moment he clearly realized that his peaceful life was over. After that, Lo Wai, covering his nose and looking at the cat girl with a red face, began to think that she was Zai Habai. Obviously a cat, he had had her for three years, how could she suddenly become a cat girl? Zai Abai, seeing the expression on Lo Wai's face and realizing what he was thinking, told him that she really looked like that, and her name was Allison. Well, really, he couldn't have noticed anything in these three years. Making a disgruntled face, Lo Wai began to remember those three years with Allison. She lay down on his laptop while he was working. But in fact Allison was studying his world. She was very aggressive when he picked her up and wanted to caress her. She went to the toilet right on his laptop and spoiled things. Remembering all this, Lo Wai said with a dissatisfied face that he was completely unaware of it. Coming closer to Lo Wai and pointing her finger at him, Allison began to tell him that according to the prophecy, he would be a brave master who would bear the burden of humanity. This prophecy would teach him everything. Starting to wave with both palms, Lo Wai closed his eyes and sat down in a meditation pose and began to tell her negatively that they must be mistaken. A brave mentor or something like that. It sounds like he became the main character of Isekai. He refuses and swears to live a century without pain. After such words, Allison turned to the girl with the staff and pointing her finger at Lo Wai began to tell her discontentedly, calling her Lord Anna, that this guy is ridiculously mentally retarded, it can't be that he was some kind of harsh mentor. Approaching Allison and touching her head, Lord Anna replied to her that she would stop talking this nonsense. Outraged by this, but then cooled down, Allison again approached Lo Wai and again pointing at him with her finger said that in any case, she had spent three whole years here to summon him here. And all this time, she had been saving up magic to take over the formation of the summoning. What if she said that there are more than one volunteers? And all the girls, starting to wave his head. Lo Wai answered Allison in the negative, saying that it was impossible in his life. Closing one eye and starting to point at the other girls, Allison asked Lo Wai about how about all of them remaining from the human race will belong to him. She promises. Hearing such a proposal, Lo Wai blushing immediately agreed, but then adjusting his glasses and looking at Allison, he said that she was trying to trick him into agreeing. No way. He saw through her. Did she really think that he would buy it? Making a displeased face, Allison called the guards and ordered them to tie up Lo Wai. After a while, Lo Wai was bound with chains all over his body and walked behind Allison. Allison holding his chains as a leash walked down the dark corridor ahead, Lo Wai calling her Zaya by first, and then remembering her real name. Lo Wai called her Allison and told her that they were guys. They are definitely not looking at the one they need, someone else would be better than him. To which Allison replied that she also believes that he is weak, lazy and depraved. He does not look at all like the legendary brave mentor. Smiling from ear to ear, Lo Wai told her that in that case, why not send him back to Earth? Abruptly turning to Lo Wai and then activating her firepower, Allison attacked Lo Wai with fire, asking him to stop dreaming. Does he think that the summoning just happened? After a while, Lo Wai was no longer tied up, and when she reached the door, Allison said that they had come. After opening the door, Allison and Lo Wai entered the room, seeing how huge it was. Lo Wai asked in surprise, what is it? Allison replied with a serious expression on her face that this is a treasure left by an ancient man, the Shinkong Library. She is their only hope. 500 years ago, an unprecedented war broke out between demons and humanity. In the end, demons occupied the mainland and founded the Troy Empire. 
while the originally powerful human race was almost destroyed. The human race had to hide in the dungeons. But despite this, the demons still hunted them until a handful of people remained. For many years, it was the Divine Air Library and the prophetic Brave Mentor that supported the pitiful resistance. She doesn't know too much about it since people adopted her as a child. Having said that, Allison walked up to Lo Wai and pointed her finger at him, saying that he would listen to her. If he wants to save his life, he better decipher the ancient text of the Shenkong Library today. Otherwise she will never let him go. Activating her firepower, Allison hit Lo Wai and shouted the word to him, Go ahead. Lo Wai ran forward and shouted that it was hot. Running to the room where books were flying in the middle, Lo Wai touching his ass crying asked himself if he should say that arrogance is what makes a cat girl so cute. After that, Lo Wai began to approach the flying books, and when he saw the name of the books, Lo Wai was shocked and asked himself, What the hell? Aren't these his textbooks? And these are legendary ancient books. Lo Wai, who approached the books, said that if it was really a so-called ancient book, then he would be able to decipher it. But still, who knows what kind of hieroglyphs are there? Taking one of the books, Lo Wai sat down on the floor and snapped his fingers, saying that he was not so bad at study, and now he would look at what was written there. After that, Lo Wai opened the book with a smile and confidence on his face, but a couple of seconds after opening, Lo Wai was shot, then abruptly closing it. Lo Wai shouted that it was over, he would not be able to decipher it, Sai Abai would let him go. After shouting this, Lo Wai began to cry, and as soon as one tear fell from his face, Lo Wai heard a voice saying that the tears of the adventurer were discovered, the mentor system, will soon be tied up. Looking up, Lo Wai happily asked, did it work out? The system grabbed Lo Wai with magic ropes, tied his whole body, and reported that the binding was successful. The analysis begins. After a couple of seconds, the system showed Lo Wai the results of the analysis. His name, Lo Wai, endurance is 10, spiritual strength is 50, attack strength is 5, protection is 5, knowledge level is 0, learning potential, 9999999, no knowledge and skills, no special skills. After reading about this, the stillbound Lo Wai shouted and asked why the level of knowledge is 0. In other words, does the level of knowledge here, specifically in this world, and not to earthly knowledge, to which the system praised him positively, informing him that the knowledge of the host about the earth could not be transferred to the continent, and they were transformed into a learning potential. According to the rules of the mentor system, here the host can study all kinds of general knowledge about the mainland, and after penetrating into the essence can master new knowledge and skills and improve their level knowledge. Being still tied up, Lo Wai closed his eyes and asked out loud, what kind of moronic system is this? Does she think he came here just like that? Allison will insult him 100%. Abruptly opening his eyes, Lo Wai said that the principle of this fireball, combustible substances plus temperature plus oxygen, isn't it the three elements of combustion? Of course, it's not just fire. These books actually explain all seven attributes of magic at the same time. And apart from the pressures of some magical constants and laws, it's nothing it differs from earthly knowledge. After such words, the system told him that he finally understood the magic and alchemy of this world. It is an improved version of physical chemistry. If he has the knowledge and skills provided by this system, the host will become the strongest in history. Still tied up, Lo Wai smiled and asked the system that now she can write him down as the strongest. Or does she have any intentions against him? A couple of minutes later, while reading the book, Lo Wai said that if you think about it, it was nice to be the strongest in history and live a hundred years without pain in another world. After some time, after reading the book and closing it, the system appeared in front of Lo Wai and informed him that she congratulated the owner on reaching the tenth level of knowledge and acquiring the skill, blocking mathematical sequence, air analysis. Having received the skill and knowledge, Lo Wai looked suspiciously at the system and asked if this was the tenth level of knowledge, where is the best that she promised, to which the system replied to him that he would behave decently. He just read the book in one minute. In general, if the owner needs to strengthen physical strength, protection and other comprehensive abilities or get special skills, he must provide additional spiritual value. Spiritual value. This specifically refers to evil spiritual values that they are created in the process of using knowledge. Starting to pick his nose. Lo Wai said that this stupid system annoys him. Exhaling, Lo Wai began to say that even being tied to the mentor system, according to the rules, he cannot become the strongest in history, not to mention live a hundred years without pain. But a cat girl will hurt him 100%. Getting up from his seat, Lo Wai said with a smile on his face that after all, she had never seen a person like him with a huge potential for learning. I wonder how his statistics have changed. With such a question, Lo Wai saw in the system that the blocking of the mathematical sequence, the analysis of the air, is still standing still. Angered by this, Lo Wai shouted that apart from the level of knowledge, the statistics did not increase at all. What the hell is he thinking about? 
Does he have no ideas? While asking these questions, Lo Y grabbed his head and continued to ask himself what to do. Maybe just make a translation of an ancient book. After hearing about this, the system informed Lo Y that the owner was tied to the account. If you arbitrarily transfer the contents of the textbook without training, the system will lead him to an explosion. After reading this, Lo Y gave the system the middle finger on both hands and told her that it was not bad for the mentor system. She was a pro at giving good advice. At the same moment, Allison came into the room with the words that she was coming in. Looking around and not seeing Lo Y, Allison asked him loudly shouting, Where is he hiding? Hiding behind a closet. Lo Y thought to himself that it was troublesome. He could not decipher the books and did not want to be a mentor. After that, Lo Y started reading the system, analyzing the air, and observing the system. Lo Y asked out loud, what is the description of the skill? Then, smiling, Lo Y said that it was interesting. Just in order to strengthen the body, bad emotions of others are needed. Allison just mocked him for not being worthy of being a brave mentor. Does she really think that he is so bad? After these words, Lo Y came out of his seat, and calling Allison by name, said that she was just in time. Hearing his words, Allison immediately turned to him, while Lo Wai continued to say that he had become a mentor approved by the Shenkong Library. Looking straight at him, Allison asked indifferently, Really, just now? To which Lo Wai answered her positively. Allison, after his answer, told him that this meant that he could teach her. Winking at her with one eye, Lo Wai replied that he could, only he had a few conditions. Firstly, she would wake him up every morning using her breasts. Hearing about this, Allison clenched her fist and got angry, while Lo Wai continued to say that secondly, she would feed him breakfast every day, mouth to mouth. After such words, Allison was burning with rage, and Lo Wai, hitting his fist on his palm, said that there was still a third. Before he could finish, Allison furiously shouted at him to shut up. Then, starting to use firepower, Allison shouted to Lo Wai that he was one of the sickest liars. Shouting about it, Allison attacked Lo Wai with a fireball. Looking at the flying ball at him, Lo Wai smiled and told himself that it was great, she was hooked. After that, Lo Wai began to run away from the ball, while thinking that, with the importance that Allison attaches to the Shenkong library, there is no way she can harm the books here, so as long as he is near the bookshelf, her magic is unlikely to hurt him. Running to the bookshelf and turning to look at the huge fireball, Lo Wai saw how this fireball gets smaller and eventually disappears. Grinning, Lo Wai said that he knew it. After that, Lo Wai started shouting towards Allison that he wasn't finished yet. Thirdly, he would stroke her tail every day. After hearing this, Allison embarrassedly repeated his words about her tail. Then, using fire magic, Allison created another huge fireball and angrily sent it at Lo Wai. She shouted at him that he would not think about it. Allison created a few more fireballs, which she sent to Lo Wai. But Lo Wai dodged everyone, with a smile on his face, thought to himself that she didn't even sweat. After that, Lo Wai said out loud that there were still three seconds left. Having said that, Lo Wai started counting the return report from three to one. Until at this time, Allison, with a red face from embarrassment and anger, said that he didn't think she couldn't fight in close combat. With these words, Allison rushed to Lo Wai. But before she reached him, Allison abruptly fell to the ground from lack of strength. She felt very weak and dizzy. Lo Wai managed to catch her, but they both eventually fell. Lo Wai blushing thought to himself that although she, as he expected, fainted, but this is a soft touch. Allison, coming to her senses, but still lying on Lo Wai, asked him what he had done to her. Why was she so weak? Looking at her, Lo Wai, with blood from his nose, told himself that this was the power of knowledge. He still had a lot to do. Hearing his words, Allison told him that it was impossible. That some kind of power of knowledge, he must be lying to her. Getting up from the ground and putting Allison on the floor, Lo Wai asked for forgiveness, while Allison asked him what he was doing. Looking at the lying and beautiful Allison, Lo Wai wiping the blood from his nose with his fingers, told her that she really thinks about it wrong. This is an underground city with poor ventilation, and there is not even a single window here. She probably never fought inside such a room, and certainly not taking into account the consequences of using a lot of fire magic. After this story, the system informed Lo Wai that the oxygen content in the room remained only 15%. Standing over Allison and starting to feel her cheek, Lo Wai told her that fire absorbs oxygen contained in the air. Hearing about this, Allison repeated the word, oxygen, and then she asked Lo Wai, what is it? To which Lo Wai replied that this is the gas that they breathe with her, and without it they can die. Thanks to her fire magic, there is not enough oxygen in this place right now, and it so happened that she is a beastman, more demanding of oxygen. Besides, she was too carried away by the fight which is natural, leads to serious hypoxic reactions, so-called dizziness, weakness and redness of the face. After his explanations, Allison said offensively, thereby adding to low Y plus 100 909 grievances that she could not believe that this was really happening. He was indeed a legendary mentor whom they all waited for and revered. 
sensing something. Allison blushed and screamed and asked Lo why what he was doing. Allison closed her eyes and started shouting at him that no matter what he dared, she would never forgive him. Smiling, Lo Y asked her, what does she think? After receiving no response, Lo Y raised his hand and slapped Allison, but Lo Y beat her to it by asking how dare a cat despise and hate his master, who fed her and loved her, and not be punished. She always talks about a brave mentor, but he doesn't want to be. The system immediately began congratulating Lo Y on what he had achieved, a hundred ass kicks, and the acquisition of a special skill, discipline in kindergarten. Lo Y was in a misunderstanding from this congratulation. The system continued to notify him that discipline in kindergarten, when an object is in a state of dizziness, he must activate this skill in order to successfully capture the object and perform a 100% hit on it. Objects on which this skill was applied can be captured unconditionally. After reading about this, Lo Y wrinkled his eyes and smiled and said that immobilizing the target, he would be able to find a use for it, as for Allison. With these words, Lo Y looked at the unconscious Allison, with a serious face. After some time, Allison woke up and found that she was tied up. She was standing on her feet, and her hands were tied to the top with the help of magic. Her body was also tied up. Allison discontentedly asked Lo Y that this was some kind of new punishment for her, to which Lo Y replied that this is called blocking a mathematical sequence, which provides a chain consisting of sequentially connected magic molecules. It is impossible to open the chains without deducing from the general formula. In order for her not to warn the others, he will have to be lenient with her for a while because he wants to be quiet and calm leave this place. Having said that, Lo Wai turned away from her and began to leave, saying that it was time for him to leave this place. As soon as Lo Wai did this, the system notified him that upon discovering the owner's departure, the Shenkong library switched to portable mode. After that, the library began to narrow and eventually disappear. Then the Shenkong library entered Lo Wai's head with the help of the system. After that the system informed him that if the owner needed to enter the Shenkong library to continue further training, he only needed to summon it in his heart, and he would be able to study without hindrance her. Closing his eyes and smiling, Lo Wai said that it looked like it was the Shenkong library, which was quite reliable. Looking at the pictures that appeared in his head, he thought for a second that he was turning into a super saiyan. After waving his hand in front of Allison, Lo Wai told her that this time, he was really leaving, and he hoped she wouldn't be mad at him. Saying this, Lo Wai thought to himself that a brave mentor definitely belongs to the category of high-risk profession. But in order to live painlessly in another world, he needs to find a place where he can score points of resentment and live a life of happiness. Hearing Lo Wai's words, Allison shouted at him not to leave. He's a brave mentor. He can't just take the Shenkong library. They were all waiting for him. They all need him. After looking at her with his eyes, Lo Wai said that she was true, he still hadn't done something before leaving. After these words, Lo Wai turned around and approached her and began to touch her tail, thereby taking away the bell on her tail. From the touch of Lo Wai, Allison blushed and moaned. Seeing this, Lo Wai asked her, saying that he only took the bell, which he himself gave her, why is she blushing and making such sounds? Taking the bell in his hands and looking at Allison, Lo Wai told her that since she was no longer Zayahabai, not his cat, he would take this bell as a souvenir, and he wished her success in the future. Turning away from Allison, and starting to leave, Lo Wai said goodbye to Allison by calling her by name. After getting out of the room where the Shenkong library was, Lo Wai began to run away quickly, saying that the depth of the dungeon was limited, and after the oxygen was replenished elsewhere, Allison would undoubtedly regain her strength, so there would be no better time than now to escape and live a painless life. Some time later, Lo Wai was still in the dungeon. He kept getting into dead ends. Having stopped and hitting the ground with his fists, Lo Wai shouted that this maze was so complicated. He had already fallen into dead ends several times in a row, and there was no one to ask for directions how to get out of here. Getting up from the ground and calming down, Lo Wai closed his eyes and said that it was better to do an air analysis to understand which way out was better. Calling on the system, Lo Wai began to think that judging by the clothes of Allison and the other girls when he saw them, it should be the middle of summer now, and the temperature and humidity at the entrance to the surface will be higher. In addition, the underground spaces are less polluted with harmful gases such as ammonia, volatile organic compounds, carbon dioxide gas. After that, the system immediately showed him the way where to go. Seeing this, Lo Wai happily shouted what it looks like in this direction. But as soon as he started running in the right direction, he immediately stopped. Because Lord Anna was ahead. With the help of a magic ball, a person in another place hurriedly told her that this time it was very difficult to fight with demons and there were many more of them. From what she heard, Lord Anna shouted that the demons, they had found this place, were they still holding on? To which the girl in another place responded positively saying that the demons have a strong team that is heading to the Shenkong library. 
After these words, the girl's moan was heard and the conversation was over. Hearing this, Lord Anna began to shout the girl's name calling her. Juan, Lord Anna called her several times, hoping that she would answer. Without hearing another word, Lord Anna, making a displeased face, removed the magic ball with the help of a staff in her hands and said with a serious face that really demons are going to the Shenkong library. Asking herself about this, Lord Anna rushed to the Shenkong library, shouted that nothing should happen there. She would not allow the Shenkong library to be harmed. Looking over the wall, Lo Wai, looking after Lord Anna, thought to himself that it looks like what they said was true. They were attacked by demons or something like that. Without thinking for a long time, Lo Wai abruptly began to run away from the place. Lo Wai said that it was necessary to quickly get away from this place before it was too late. After running a little, the bell from Lo Wai's pocket fell, stopped. Lo Wai looked at the bell, and he immediately thought that Allison was still there. As soon as Lo Wai thought about it, he began to have memories of Allison when she was his cat, turning in the direction of the Shenkong library. Lo Wai rushed there thinking to himself that he would just look, he would not enter, he would just make sure that Allison was alright, with Oya on the sidelines, and then immediately leave. At the same time, Allison was still tied up, and the zombies were approaching her, one of the monsters asked her, she still doesn't want to tell the truth, to which Allison replied that. As she had already said, she did not know where the Shenkong library was located. Allison was very angry. She was adding zombies plus 100 909 malice. After answering the zombies question, Allison thought to herself that if she could open the damn lock, she would instantly take off the heads of these zombies. Looking towards the unconscious Lord Anna, Allison frowned and said to herself that even Lord Anna was defeated by them. Zombies approached Allison and grabbed her by the thigh. Feeling this, Allison screamed loudly that they would get out of here and get away from her. After that, Allison and the zombies heard the voice of Lo Wai, who shouted calling the zombies little devilish trash that daddy was already here, he was coming. Hearing his voice, Allison immediately asked herself that it was Lo Wai's voice. The zombies, hearing Lo Wai's voice, smiled and began to release a frenzy of poisonous gas. The leader of the monsters, also smiling, told Allison that no matter how many rescuers came, the ending would be the same. The gas filled the entire space, and as soon as the gas subsided, it was clear that Lo Wai was standing unharmed, with a smirk on his face. Seeing this, the leader of the monsters shouted and asked, What is it? It is impossible. How could he, a man without magical power, remain unharmed? Smiling and looking directly at the leader of the monsters, Lo Wai answered him with a question, Does he know himself what the composition of the zombie poison mist is? If you spray it down accidentally, bad breath will appear. That's what he will tell him. Air analysis can guarantee that he will survive by analyzing the differences of the conditions and components of the air, including the poison gas. It also means that his daddy, that is, he is absolutely immune to toxins during the activation of the skill. Seeing Lo Wai, Allison asked him in surprise, why did he come back? Lo Wai, after her question, thought to himself that how could he know? He himself does not know this. He just wants to return home as soon as possible. He is ashamed to talk about it, but he must maintain the image of a gentleman, taking the rose in his mouth. Lo Wai answered Allison's question with the question that why did he come back? Doesn't she know? Without finishing, Lo Wai was very surprised to see Allison half-naked and still tied up, her clothes were torn, and she herself was very red blushing from such a sight. Lo Wai's nose bled and he shouted, Who the hell did this? To which the leader of the monsters with his head raised replied to Lo Wai that it was his order. Hearing his answer, Lo Wai gave him a thumbs up, and with a smile on his face told him that it was a great job, the view was just beautiful. Listening to their words, Allison shouted the name of Lo Wai, Lo Wai, waving his hands and closing his eyes. Also smiling, said that he was joking, he was here to remove the blocking of the mathematical sequence from her. After Lo Wai's words, the leader of the monsters shouted for people to get out of his sight, and he calls for the dead soldiers. Dead soldiers immediately appeared in front of the leader, and there are much more zombies than there were before. Lo Wai immediately told the system to give him basic information about the enemy to which the system immediately replied to him that zombies, a race, demons and undead, have such skills as, first, the madness of poisonous fog, they can exhale poisonous gas, second, deadly sleeping fluid, once bitten, a person can die from the liquid contained in the saliva of zombies, just low why is not worth it touch monsters, as their bodies are very toxic after death, after receiving the information. Lo Wai adjusted his glasses with one hand and with a grin on his face said that this is basically the same thing he knew about zombies from the very beginning. But why isn't the information about this skeleton, the leader of the zombies, displayed? The system immediately replied to him that unfortunately, this system only provides basic information of abilities on the mainland, but there is no data on superpowers, she asks for forgiveness. Lo Wai immediately shouted at the system that she said she could do anything. And what does that mean? 
smiling sharply. Lo Y continued to say that it also indirectly proves the strength of this skeleton. This skeleton is much stronger than these zombies, since it is so. Lo Y suddenly shouted at the system to use all his current malice points to enhance his agility. After receiving this order, the system immediately began to do as Lo Y said, enjoying the process. Lo Y said that the body became so light and relaxed, as if he had just had a massage. It's a wonderful feeling. After that, Lo Y, with all seriousness on his face, began to think to himself that it remained only to calculate the speed and position of the zombies in accordance with the changes in speed and air pressure, as well as acceleration. At the same moment, one of the zombies almost touched Lo Y, but Lo Y managed to avoid it at the very last moment. He jumped over Allison and told him that he was coming. Seeing this, Allison was surprised to tell him that she really didn't expect him to come to save her. Grinning and looking at Allison, Lo Y told her to shut up, he would show her who daddy was here. Embarrassed by his words, Allison turned her head away from him and said that she did not see any strange thing. To which Lo Y started telling her that it's not such a strange thing. It's a very good thing that can defeat these ugly monsters. Slowly looking at Lo Y, Allison was shocked because Lo Y was holding a simple book in his hand. Lo Y himself went on to say that of course this textbook is based on her level of knowledge. After his words, the system informed Lo Y that he would not tell readers everything they did not need, otherwise they would lose all interest. Waving his hand at the system, Lo Y told Allison that next time, she first needed to read it, and then he would explain everything to her in practice. Allison immediately asked him how. In such a short time, alone, and besides, he has no magic at all, he will immediately fly out of the fight. Lo Y, smiling, also asked her that maybe they would make a bet. Approaching Allison, Lo Y whispered in her ear that if they won, she would just give him, how about it, would she mind? Allison was embarrassed. Turning her head away from Lo Y, she answered him positively, saying that she would keep her promise if only he would help them win. If the outcome was different, then he might not count on it. Handing the book to Allison, Lo Y said that he had left notes there. Looking at all this, the skeleton leader angrily began to shout at them that they would stop. How much longer would they? People continue to ignore him. Do they think that he is invisible or do they perceive him as an empty place? Not hearing a word from Allison and Lo Y in response, the skeleton leader shouted to the dead soldiers that they would tear off their heads so that they would finally see him, calling him Lord Patrick. All the dead soldiers agreed at once and immediately ran towards Lo Y and Allison. Seeing the zombies running towards them, Allison started shouting at Lo Y that they were already running towards them and would be here soon. He had to help her open this fucking lock so that she would deal with all of them. Thus, Allison added Lo Y plus 98 points to the knowledge of malice. Lo Y, with a calm face, told her not to worry, because he would help her remove the lock, it's nothing complicated. While saying this, Lo Y asked himself that this could also cause a sense of resentment. Strange knowledge was added. After these thoughts, Lo Y removed the lock with just a wave of his hand on it. Having freed herself, Allison immediately ran to the zombies, starting to use her power and shouting at them that they would be cursed. They would regret what they had just done. Running towards them, Allison was abruptly embarrassed and thought to herself that it would be nice to win. But if they win, she should give it to him, give it to him. They still have to win. After these thoughts, Allison made a serious and determined expression on her face. Suddenly, Lo Y shouted Allison's name with a cold voice, and Allison stopped abruptly, looking at her. Lo Y with a serious face told her that from now on she must do as he says, and in no case doubt, otherwise not only she will suffer, but also he. Looking at Lo Y, Allison asked him in surprise that he was sure he didn't need her help. Lo Y answered her with the question, who will guard her when he goes? Asking this, Lo Y thought to himself that the first secret of painless survival is to avoid. If he can, then he should use skills and fight back. After that, Lo Y loudly told Allison to be careful, because all the monsters are already coming in their direction. Hearing his words, Allison ran to meet these zombies, and when she reached them, they began to attack Allison, while Lo Y, standing still, shouted at Allison to go five steps to the left and then jump. Allison, without hesitation, did everything as Lo Y said. Then Lo Y shouted at her again to duck. Allison reflexively did so, finding herself on the floor in a very embarrassing pose. Allison with a red face asked Lo Y that these poses, did he do it on purpose? To which Lo Y answered her with a question smiling. What is she talking about? He directs her so that she would avoid their attacks and not get hurt. And now she has to go 20 steps forward. While saying this, Lo Y was looking at the air separation system. The current air contains only 83% hydrogen. Allison, heading 20 steps forward, was surrounded by zombies. Not knowing what to do next, she asked Lo Y saying that they were everywhere, was she surrounded? What should she do? Lo Y replied to her that she would wait for his command and did not do anything. 
Lord Patrick, approaching Allison, laughed and said that he could not find the Shinkong library, so they should not accuse him of impoliteness, but if they showed where she was. Hearing such words, Allison made a hostile expression. Seeing this, Lord Patrick told her that it would be nice to exterminate her entire family. After these words, the zombies began to approach Allison. Lo Wai shouted at her to jump right now, then turned around and used her fireball. Allison, after listening to Lo Wai, began to do everything as he said. Lord Patrick, hearing his words, repeated questioningly, a fireball, ashamed of such simple magic. Abruptly, Lord Patrick felt a very hot flame above his head, looked up and saw a very large fireball that was flying straight at them. After a moment, the fireball had already reached the monsters. Because of this, the monsters began to add low Y plus 200 909 points of offense, and these numbers were repeated many more times. Due to the fact that it happened so quickly, not a single zombie could escape, hide or even dodge the attack. After a while, all the zombies and Lord Patrick were lying on the ground unconscious. Seeing all this, Lo Wai muttered to himself that the explosion was really strong, but fortunately, he runs fast enough, and therefore he remained unharmed. Allison at this time touching her ass ran back and forth screaming that her ass was so hot, calling Allison by name with a serious voice. Lo Wai smiled and asked her that she remembered their deal, right? Embarrassed, Allison recalled Lo Wai's words when she was tied up that if he won, she would let him stroke it. After some time later, Lo Wai began stroking Allison's. Lo Wai said in a pleasant voice that it was so nice. After these words, Allison asked Lo Wai with a red face, how about an explanation? Because she practically did not understand anything. To which Lo Wai replied with a grin, looking at her back, so that she would not worry, because now he will tell everything. He said before that the ninth zombie fog, the main component of which is grey hydrogen gas produced by a decomposing corpse. This poisonous fog also has a feature. It automatically returns into the zombie's body after a while, so that the zombie can use it next time. This is due to the law of conservation of matter. He will tell her about it in more detail when he has the opportunity. Sitting on the floor next to Lo Wai, Allison began to ask him that wasn't he facing demons for the first time. How did he know all this, besides so well? Lo Wai answered her casually that he could prove all this knowledge. It was necessary to lure zombies so that they would continuously spray poisonous fog. Allison realized something. Abruptly started talking and asking what could be. The concentration of hydrogen sulfide spewed by one zombie is very small, and after a short period of time it will be restored by zombies. Starting to stroke Allison's chin with one hand, Lo Wai told her, while Allison was enjoying his touch, that the minimum hydrogen sulfide explosion was not reached, 4.3%, so until then, she needed to get the zombies to spray a lot of poisonous gas around, a small fireball, enough to cause explosion. While saying this, Lo Wai let go of Allison and thought to himself that besides, thanks to the poison mist recovery mechanism, the toxic substances from the explosion still return back to the zombies, getting up from the ground and starting to walk towards Lord Anna and her staff. Who was still unconscious, Lo Wai said that there was one more thing she had to do for him. Allison immediately asked him that he wanted to do the same with Lord Anna. After asking about this, Allison thought to herself that although Lord Anna is really more majestic than her, Lo Wai pulled the ball out of Lord Anna's staff and asked Allison, who was all red, if she could make this thing for him. Seeing that Lo Wai pulled the ball out of Lord Anna's staff, Allison was shocked, her mouth opened wide, and her eyes came out to the forehead. After a while, watching Lo Wai doing something near Lord Patrick, Allison, standing on the sidelines, asked herself, what does he want to do? Fry Master Anna's magic ball in such a strange way. Lo Wai got to his feet and said that he had already finished and everything was ready for him. Lord Patrick abruptly grabbed the leg of Lo Wai, who was about to leave him and the other zombies, began to tell him and asked that he was a human brat, he really underestimated him, he's a legendary brave mentor, right? Lo Wai was surprised and scared at the same time. He shouted to Lord Patrick that he was still alive. How so? At the same moment, Lo Wai felt the heaviness in his body returning. The system also informed him that the emotional force was exhausted and the air analysis would be automatically turned off. Lo Wai's mouth opened wide from this message and he nervously shouted that he could not believe that this had happened right now, at such and such a moment. Lord Patrick had already started to get to his feet. Feeling this, Lo Wai mentally spoke to Allison, showing her a hand sign and making different facial expressions, so that she would come up and help him deal with this corpse. What Allison imagines at this time, she sees how Lo Wai mentally tells her that he will take care of this stupid zombie, and she should run away from here as fast as possible, starting to cry. And then immediately calming down, Allison shouted to Lo Wai that she understood him, he should take care of himself, and she would not stay here to support him. After that, Allison said goodbye to him and quickly took off, so quickly that in a second she was gone, and Lo Wai sent her to say goodbye, shouting that he did not ask her to stay for him. In the end, Lo Wai also called Allison saying that she was a stupid cat. 
By this time, Lord Patrick got up on the ground, abruptly touched Lo Wai's shoulder. From this Lo Wai had goosebumps all over his body, slowly turning to Lord Patrick and pulling a smile on his face. Lo Wai asked him, calling him brother, how did he rise again? It was very cool and spectacular. Why would he not teach him the same? Asking about this, Lo Wai thought to himself that rule number two of painless survival is fucking. If he can't resist, then he needs to run away as fast as possible. Lord Patrick, with a smile on his face, agreeing with Lo Wai, abruptly raised the sword to the top, which was in his hand to attack, then shouted to him that first he would make him one of his relatives, so that he would belong to him and obey him. Seeing how Lord Patrick swung his sword, Lo Wai managed to react quickly and managed to dodge his blow, rolling on the ground protecting his head. After that, Lo Wai clenched his fists in the ground and closed his eyes, saying under his breath that this dead skeleton was too stupid, it was obvious that Jian was just trying to survive without pain. Looking at the standing Lord Patrick, Lo Wai, with a serious look on his face, said under his breath that since he blocked his way, in short, then calling on the system, Lo Wai shouted and started asking her, is everything ready? And can he start already? To which the system replied to him that the first successful mentoring of a student, the system opened the lottery function. 